Are DSA rounds getting replaced with system design rounds? What's your thought? As far as I know, I don't know any companies where that is the case. There's always going to be some type of coding round, whether it's DSA or something else, because at the lower level positions, that's primarily your job anyway, doing a lot of coding. System design is very vague. You have boxes and you have servers talking to databases. You know, you can draw a box and say, I'm adding a load balancer. Whoa, I said the key word. I said the two words. Words, the magic word load balancer. Now that's going to automatically scale my application. It's very shallow. It's what I don't like about system design. In a real system design interview, it's not about putting the boxes in the correct place because it's really a template. The best example that I could give with this, and I'm not even trying to plug at this point, I made a course and I made a design doc, which is free. I'm genuinely not trying to plug a short design doc, right? You're trying to solve a problem, right? Like design YouTube. I focus on a pretty specific part of it, video processing part. In theory, this design should work, right? It's just very basic. You transcode a video and then you consume a video. There's missing parts to this. There's no CDN. There's no blah, blah, blah. There's not all that stuff. In a real system designer view, you won't be able to go in depth to all those components because even in this thing, I wrote this three or four page design doc and there were so many damn problems with it. And I think that's what a system design interview should be about. You have something that feeds in to some workers that transcode videos. Well, where are the bottom? bottlenecks. What happens when it fails? What's it going to do? Is it going to retry? I think that's what a system design interview is about. And I think in many cases at many companies, that is what they do. They dig into those details. For example, you have a message queue, a pub sub that feeds into a fleet of workers that can kind of auto scale, but is it going to be pull based or push based? And why? In this design doc, when I implemented the project, I went with push based just because it was more simple. But 100% pull based is better. And I literally talked about why that is. It's not about like drawing the boxes. It's about actually understanding the boxes, the details, the differences. The best way to understand that is to implement certain things. If you watch system design video, try to implement that application because it, it doesn't take as long as you would think. This YouTube clone, it probably took me like 60 hours of coding to implement this. Try that and you'll improve your coding skills and your system design skills at the same time. You'll improve your ability to read documentation at the same time. I had used a lot of those Google Cloud tools before, but if you can't like quickly code up like a basic clone of something, then you should probably improve your coding skills because I'm not even that good at coding. I didn't even write that much code at Google. Even I was able to do it. Did you follow a guide or write it on your own? I pretty much wrote it on my own. Technically, I kind of, in a sense, I followed a guide. I made a system design video about designing YouTube and I more or less used this architecture. I didn't include certain components. I did not include a CDN just to keep it simple. If you look at this system design video and I had people in the comments tell me, hey, this system design is overly simplistic. It won't work. Well, I pretty much implemented a basic clone with it. In theory, they're right. It is in some ways oversimplistic. But in a real interview, do you really think somebody can design the entire YouTube clone and optimize every single component? I mean, do you have any idea how complicated that would be? Even in a system design interview, View, you end up focusing on one component. I read the docs at Google, which tell you how to conduct a system design interview. And they specifically said, do not ask overly vague questions like, how do you design YouTube? How do you design this massive service? And they say, if you do end up asking that, at some point, you have to narrow the scope of the interview. The reason I title it this way is that's the meta of system design content on social media and YouTube and stuff. It's never that simple. In a real interview, you always narrow down into one part. In that personal project, I very specifically focused on the transcoding. I didn't implement the user interface very much at all. Even this, I kind of touched on it in the video. Video streaming, pretty complicated. You're telling me that if you're preparing for system design interviews, not only do you got to know in detail all these hundred ass components, but you also got to be an expert on video playback. How many people can say they are? I I worked with several senior engineers. They were very good. And I can tell you, of course, they don't know how to build the entire YouTube system. Of course, they don't know everything about video streaming. Most people don't, and most people don't have to, but it's not about that. Like in a system design interview, you can demonstrate your skills in other ways. Senior engineers write a lot of design docs. Do you think the design doc that they write is we're designing this massive system for the first time? One senior engineer is just going to tell me exactly how to do it. No, they design very small systems. And even that is really hard. System design interviews are really misleading. Nobody's designing this massive system. 
stuff. They are designing small things and doing it really, really well. Whereas in system design interviews, people are designing big things very, very poorly. 